The wait is finally over and it's time for the Valorant Champions Grand Finals to start. Everyone, give it up! A lot of people want to do this. The pattern I've generally seen is genuinely work ethic. Today, two teams will take the stage, but only one can lift the trophy. My name is Yingsu Collins and I am the host and interviewer for Valorant in VCT EMEA. I think when it comes to being a good interviewer and a show host is somewhat subjective. There's so many different ways to do it. When it comes to interviews, I kind of live by it's not about me because it's really short. Usually when you do live interviews, it's four minutes maximum. I just want to make sure that I maximize that time to bring something out of the person I'm with. There isn't just one way. Find whatever works for you, whatever is comfortable and just be confident because nine out of 10 times, the audience won't really care about what you do as long as you deliver it with confidence. One of the things I think I learned the most in traditional sport and media was there was a lot of pressure. The pressure was incredibly high. It made you feel like it was life or death. Like you knew you, I was not a doctor, you know, I'm not saving people's lives, but the way that the pressure was so high kind of gave you that stress that made you feel like if you didn't put a specific piece of work out in time, then your life was gonna be over. I don't agree with operating like that, but because I was kind of used to that pressure. I was pretty much unflappable when I came to esports where nothing really ever made me feel that stressed. It kind of helped me a lot when it came down to certain situations where the pressure was high. I mean, a part of me like to think that I am a useful clog in the machine that is esports. That is something that we're all trying to build as an industry. For me, I think the most important thing is being able to set an example for everybody else in the future. My favorite thing, honestly, one of my favorite things just in life is meeting people that I ne never met before that tell me that something that I did was meaningful enough to them that gave them the motivation to kind of join our industry. It's a very powerful thing because that's how I started. Everybody I think has that story of the first tournament you saw, the first player that you saw that opened the door to kind of draw you in and I love that about our industry. Making a living. <laughs> I think that's not talked about enough. It's really nice to be able to do something that you really love and be paid for it and to actually be able to earn a living. It is really tough. It is really hard. You have to make sure you're committing your time and what you're doing the right places and sometimes it's gonna feel like it's not worth it. A lot of times you're gonna feel like it's not getting me anywhere. I'm trying so hard but I'm not seeing any results so I think that is really, really, really tough and a big hurdle for people to get over. In terms of unwanted attention, absolutely. The internet has created this illusion that it's just like a weird thing where people just think they know me. They think they know how I feel. They want to put words in my mouth when it comes to what I think. And that's really jarring for me. Um, I've definitely struggled with it a lot in the beginning, but that is something that everybody, I think, really deals with on social media. I kind of separated between constructive criticism and just people either trying to get a like a get a reaction out of me. The people that are genuinely giving constructive criticism, you know, I actually take that to heart. I really do take it on board. And that's helped me a lot in terms of being able to separate what is something that I actually value and what is something that I can just roll my eyes at and just move on with my life. When it comes to becoming successful and becoming one of the best in any field, I think it takes a lot of hard work, sacrifices. I think sacrifice is something people don't really talk about. You have to make a lot of sacrifices. Your social life, sometimes sacrifice your sleep. You also have to have a lot of self-belief, being your own number one fan, being your biggest cheerleader. So I think a combination of that probably attributed to my current uh, success. When it comes to networking, it's important for everything, literally every aspect of your life. But it also isn't the end or be all. I think you don't have to change who you are. You don't have to pretend to be something you're not in order to network. 
just sit down, write down what it is that you can offer other people, what it is that you think you have or you possess that other people might uh, want to get to know you or they might need because that is ultimately what you're looking for when you go to those networking places. When you do that and when you're confident with, with what it is that you can offer and what you can't offer as well, um, you're gonna meet like-minded people and you're gonna make a good impression. Confidence is a really big one. I think in this industry of a lot of burnouts and a lot of imposter syndromes everybody else talk about, you just have to stay confident in who you are and you have to just be okay with what you can and can't do. Sometimes you're gonna have to just accept you're not gonna be able to achieve X, Y, and Z overnight or this problem, you do not have what it takes to solve this problem and that's fine and you learn from it and then you can grow from it instead of letting it kind of play on your mind, let it hurt your personal self-esteem and confidence.